Welcome back. Now, Finance Minister Enoch Gorongwana delivered the 2022 medium-term budget policy statement on Wednesday. The budget outlined challenges faced by the country and solutions that the government will implement to tackle, among others, ESCOM's debt and giving a solution to the ongoing ETOL problem in Gauteng. For some analysis, we are now joined by Professor Yuri van Fieren from the Business Management Department at the University of Pretoria. Prof, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Now, as I mentioned, there have been some mixed reactions from the midterm budget that was presented earlier this week, with Kosatsu saying that the budget was not bold enough. Agri SA, however, stated that it neglected to provide for critical interventions to support South Africa's hard hit farmers, while business leadership South Africa welcomed the budget, saying that it affirms the country's adherence to a policy of fiscal consolidation that will lead to a better growth in future. What were your reactions to the budget? Um, thank you. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, I think we just have to take a step back and look a little bit at the situation that the minister faced um, and that he is still facing. Um, we have a few characteristics of the situation that he's trying to, in, um, to manage here. Um, we know that our electricity supply is very unstable. Um, our ports are not very effective. Um, crime and corruption is quite rife. And then our state's capacity is not very high. So um, the market access levels and barriers to entry is also very high. So um, against that background, I think that the minister's got a very an important as well as a very difficult job to do. But uh, um, I think that if you look at what is of interest here is that he says, or that he indicated that he is going to take over a significant portion of ESCOM's 400 billion rand debt. And that in itself gives us an indication that the certainty is not lying in there. And my question immediately would be, are we talking about 200 billion? Are we talking about 100 billion? And we have to give it that it is a national asset. Um, it needs attention. At the same time, then Danel got 2.9 and Transnet 3.4 billion and Sunrol 23.7 billion. Um, with the statement made to citizen that stability and conservatism is being then served, yes, I agree with that. Um, that what I then at the certain point do not agree with is that um, we need it, I think, a little bit more in terms of in serious interventions which we need. We have to admit that we have 12 million people that's unemployed. Certainly. I mean, if, Prof, you make mention of the SOEs that um, would be getting fresh allocations, that being Transnet and Denal, and, and also what we're seeing with regards to ESCOM, the minister also went on to explain that the funding of these SOEs will come with strict pre- and post-conditions. Do you believe that this would be us maybe moving in the right direction, seeing where bailouts for ESCOM have taken us as a country? Yes, I think that if he's not going to manage that very strictly, and as he mentioned also that the lenders of money are tough and difficult people that he has to deal with, I have more or less I have the idea that are their preconditions um, to indicate to Sibleson we will borrow money to you and uh, we will assist you, but there are going to be strict rules that you have to adhere to. Um, which is good news. I think that in the past, maybe there was not such strict hand on what these, what happened to this money. Um, and I believe that that is prescribed to a certain extent. And also, it maybe shows out the technocrat that he is. And uh, if I may say so, that, you know, the devil is in the detail. Um, we don't know, know the detail yet of what the next year, year's budget is going to be. But we obviously we have to take into account that um, the politics have not played a role here yet. Um, and then the unions have not always also then decided from their side what they're going to do, given the fact that they only got 3% then for some of their members. 
some of the other good news, Prof. Shirley, is that the tax revenue collection has been surprisingly high. However, those allocations due to the disaster relief following the KZN floods have weighed heavily on the fiscus. Now, the 350 grants which came in effect due to the pressures of COVID-19 um, are being extended to March 2024. Is this feasible? Can we afford it? I think personally, yes. I think that in the process we can be able to do it. In actual fact, if you're really honest about it, what can you do? Um, if you're the minister, you have to then from your side say, well, I am going to then from my side give attention to this, um, given the fact that um, I am from my side the custodian and I have to leave from my side, I have to take into account then, then some people and some of these vulnerable people need then money to be able to feed their families. Um, but I have to make a comment regarding this, and it's a comment that I think personally it's not said enough. Um, it is very good news that then the collections have increased, maybe not personally for the two of us, <laughs> for the fact that we're going to pay more tax. But the fact is that <clears throat> we've created something here, and I will come back to that later if we have the time. We've created something here that is, in terms of the grants, not something that is sustainable. Let me try to explain it the way that I see it. I may be wrong. But the way that I see it is that South Africa PTY Limited, we as a country, um, are now then borrowing money, which is then to a certain extent, it would have been better if we could have created capacity then with money that you borrow. What South Africa PTY Limited is doing now is we are spending this money, we're spending now on an operational expense. And that operational expense are then, then these grants. And I think there are different ways in which we can be able then to address this. But are those different ways, Prof, not in the good news that a fair amount is being allocated to infrastructure spending, which in turn will help stimulate the economy and also create jobs? And, and where would that leave the SMMEs? You see, the problem we have with that is the cascading effect down to the smaller guy that is going to create the job. You must just remember one thing. By revising, then they're expecting growth from 2.2% to 1.9%. It's going to put a cap on creating jobs then in its essence. Um, so we can expect that in next year and then in 2025, 2024, 2025, these expectations is 1.6% um, net um, economic growth, which is also not going to make a huge dent in terms of our unemployment rate. So um, although it is then a good investment to make, those, then that specific investment, I don't know whether we're going to do it. Because at the same time, we know that there is going to be an increase of 111 billion rand for grants to support 2.8 billion million students. Um, which in its essence can be seen as an investment in the future. But again, I say that I think there's a few other things that we do not give attention to in this then beautiful country of ours that can be spent then more wiser than doing exactly this. Well, if there's one thing that's been given attention to profits, ETOLs, and ETOLs have been a very contentious point for national and the Gauteng Provincial Government. Now, Minister Godongwana said we need to move on from those debates of previous years and start finding solutions to this challenge. Now, that solution being that the Gauteng Provincial Government will contribute 30% to settling Sandro's debt and the interest obligations, while national gov government will cover then the 70%. Now, going forward, the Gauteng government will also have to cover the cost of maintaining the 201 kilometers and associated interchanges of these roads. Where is this Gauteng government going in terms of planning um, to fund the 12 million rands from? And is it really fair to leave this responsibility of a national road squarely on the residents of Gauteng? Is this not a short-lived victory? Um, yes, I think that it's not winning the war just then for that argument, the winning maybe of having a short-term victory, as you say. Uh, the fact is that 
it's a contentious, it was a contentious issue since the beginning. Um, irrespective of what then or how the, then it was handled then in terms of its negotiation with um, the all stakeholders. Um, I think maybe a bigger concern for the Gauteng government is where they're going to get the money to be able to do this. Um, they in themselves, they are dependent on then the fiscus and uh, whether this is then um, the possible, whether it's then feasible, I have from my side, I've got a certain amount of doubt. But can I just then maybe make a comment in terms of these direct interventions that we can be able to make? I've made a comment in terms of the number of people that are then dependent on the, the grants. Um, you see, we've arrived at a time where, and that's what I'm talking about, about decisive then kind of action. Um, I say we arrived at a time, in actual fact, we've arrived at this time a couple of years ago. And there are a number of people who's got a responsibility here. Um, we talk about a budget. We talk about a budget that may eventually then, then truly play out in the 2023. We'll be going to see the detail. But, you know, we've got this big then problem in terms of the South African budget. And that's then to create capacity for entrepreneurs in, in society. We are sitting with a budget, and we now um, I'm indicating your numbers. I've just read to you numbers here. And the minister also said that there will be an increase in then these um, amounts, 66.7 billion in terms of the infrastructure, rising to 112.5 billion. But what is never mentioned in this budget statement is something regarding small business um, development. Small business development in any other international country, you find yourself that that is what the engine for economic growth. Now, our budget, <coughs> I just had a look now five minutes ago before we went on air. Our budget for 2021-2022 is 2.5 billion. Now, just listen to the contrast here. We talk about 2.5 billion, and we are then comparing that to 112 billion. Our social ground budget in South Africa is 246 billion per annum. Our small business development budget is 7.9 billion over three years. Now, you cannot be able to create this engine of then under, um, um, entrepreneurial growth as well as then economic growth without investing in that. It falls out in something else as well. If we look at it, and there's always pleas by the politicians, if you then will excuse me by then referring to it like that, that, but we must grow jobs by means of starting businesses. You don't grow a job, and you don't start the business to create jobs. You start a business to make money. Now, in the process, we find ourselves that our existing businesses, just for example, doing business with the state, are waiting way then beyond the 30 days prescribed by the, the Municipal Finance Management Act and the Public, Public Management Finance Act, which is 30 days. Now, which small business is supposed to survive that? Now, the minister, if he goes into detail, if I can give him advice, and I know he's not going to ask me, is to say, start to budget properly. If you want to take your Department of Small Business Development, multiply their budget by 10 and start with direct interventions to create jobs. All right. Thank you so much, Professor. That's the all, all time we have for this evening. Quite alarming numbers that we are seeing there in terms of those allocations, and hopefully we'll be able to continue such discussions. But thank you so much for your time.